Today we were getting a lot of the uh, volunteers from our uh, YAC group and also from uh, our courts system from uh, JB to come out and mark inlets for us. These here is what we're going to be putting on the inlets. Okay. So on the back of here, what happens is that there's lots of material in here. So in order to put these markers on the inlets, whoever's going to be handling the glue and this marker needs to be wearing gloves. And to put door hangers and flyers out to the residents in those neighborhoods where we're putting the, the inlet marking at. It's more to provide information to the citizens just to let them know exactly what can and can't be done in our, uh, in our waterways and just try to protect our waterways. When you come to a flume, you have two little concrete walls, probably about a foot high each. We're going to put a marker on each side of that wall. Well, an inlet is uh, anything that water goes into. Inlets usually lead out to uh, streams and creeks where they outfall to. So a lot of times in streets, you'll see them on curbs. In parking lots, sometimes you see them in the parking lots. They're big old squares with grates on them. And those are just conveyances for water to travel into our waterways. <laughs> That water that comes up off some of the parking lots and in the curbs and in the streets, none of that water is treated, so it goes straight from the streets. Whatever that rainwater picks up, it carries those contaminants out into the, the waterways untreated. So we just try to get the word out, just to let them know that uh, the less contaminants we have on the ground, the less it's going to get picked up by the storm water. Get a piece of tape, stick it on there, and stick it on the door. Yeah. Um, today we are marking drainage inlets. We scrape it clean and then we we use like a special, it smells like rubber like and it looks like tar. We put it on the little plate that says don't dump water, uh, water inlet here and we place it there after we've cleaned it. It started. We have an illicit discharge ordinance right now. It's, it's fairly new. A lot of citizens still don't know about it, but it, that's what we're trying to do, get the word out to them and let them know what they can and can't do. Uh, one of the regulations now for our illicit discharge ordinance, well, what it really means is that if it's not composed entirely of stormwater, it's an illicit discharge. Whether it be grass clippings, trash, oil and grease, anything that's not composed of stormwater is an illicit discharge. It's kind of easier to explain to residents that way. This water, no matter what, it always comes back. It doesn't matter where it comes from, whether it comes from the creek or the pond, it's always going to come back. And if you dump different things in the water that you wouldn't drink, then you're going to end up drinking it some one way or another. Don't mess with the water. I mean, you're going to end up drinking it again, and it's, it's pretty gross if you're dumping things that shouldn't be in the water to begin with. First, I'd like to thank the Yak Group. Those kids are always there for us. They're always volunteering out. It's a great group. The court system too, JV, they, they do a great job of working with us and helping us out. So I definitely want to thank them for participating. Yeah. To the public, maintaining clean waterways, it, it's, it's all our responsibility. You know, everybody, everybody has to take part in it. It's not something that just a few of us in our department can do. It's a responsibility of all citizens. So it, it's going good. As long as they continue to respond and they continue to, to work with us and let us know about these violations, we'll continue to go out there and investigate them.